Hello! Today we're going to talk about genetics and genomics and what every nurse needs to know. As you about are about to enter into practice, just want to kind of bring you back around um, thinking about all the things that you learned about genetics and genomics in your program. And then as we get ready to graduate, think about, well, what is it that I'm responsible for and how would I use this information? So I have the objectives here to kind of uh, lead you to think about what it is that you need to do. And um, when we're in class, in lab, we're going to actually be doing a um, activity that helps you um, apply some of the knowledge. But you, you say to yourself, well, what does every nurse need to know? And it's really important to care for persons and families and communities or even populations throughout their lifespan that a registered nurse will need to demonstrate proficiency in incorporating genetic and genomic information into their practice. The nurse who administers or monitors medical treatment would have to know about genetics or genomics because we have um, medications now that we can use uh, a genetic uh, test to see if it's the best medication for you. A nurse who provides counseling to patients about health conditions has to know which health conditions may have a genetic link. If you're making referrals or managing cases or designing health promotion or disease prevention interventions in the community, you need to know about genetics and genomics because you would want to provide that information to help people make good decisions. And, and providing knowledge is empowering people to make good decisions for themselves. So a nurse needs a working knowledge of the genetic framework that underpins what we call personalized medicine. So some, a couple of things that kind of, as I mentioned, would be things that you would have to potentially be able to do. So can you understand the genetic and genomic basics of health or illness for the client seeking care? Do you recognize newborn risk for morbidity or mortality resulting from genetic metabolic errors? Are you able to identify asymptomat an asymptomatic adolescent who's at high risk for hereditary ca colon cancer? Or identify a couple at risk for having a child with a genetic condition? Are you able to guide interventions for prevention of cardiovascular disease to young adults? Or assist anyone having questions about genetic or genomic information? So really, you can see the application of why a nurse needs to have a general knowledge about genetics and genomics and depending on where you land in your nursing career, you may be doing more or less of this, but it's important that we all have a, a working knowledge. So when we talk about being competent in something, um, when we talk about genetics, the American Nurse Association and the National Institute of Health responded to the need to organize and kind of articulate the, the genetic and genomic competency for nurses. So RNs and advanced practice practitioners have competencies that encompass ethical, legal, and social issues. The um, organizations came up with competencies that included both knowledge and clinical performance indicators in two domains. So they organized it that there would be professional responsibilities that a nurse should have to be competent, and then there would be um, professional practice responsibilities that a nurse would have to um, be if they wanted to look at being competent in that. So um, an example of competencies in the professional responsibilities domain is that the nurse should recognize one's own attitudes and values related to genetic and genomic science, and that that may affect the care that they provide to their clients. So. Um, the way that they split it up was that specific areas of knowledge that a nurse would have to have is that the values, attitudes, and beliefs that influence genetic and genomic services would have to be something that the nurse would have to explore. So, for example, what are their views on pregnancy termination? If they were going to be involved in that, they have to really think about their attitudes and values as it relates to providing information to families with um, genetic or genomic science. And 
the uh, performance indicator for this would be that the nurse engages in reflective practice about one's own beliefs and values related to the care that integrates genetics and genomics. And so you can see that this is very applicable to all of us if we think about, you know, am I comfortable talking to a family about um, genetic testing and, you know, what's out there and what, what it can tell them and what it might mean for them. Another example, um, because I just wanted to kind of give you a couple examples so you could kind of understand, you know, what this means, is that under the professional responsibilities that a nurse would incorporate genetic and genomic technologies and information into practice. And so areas of knowledge would be technology and information systems for clinical care and clinical decision making, which include the electronic health record, client monitoring systems, medication administration, genetic or genomic testing technologies, or other things that support genetic and genomic um, based care. And the indicators would be that the nurse would evaluate genetic and genomic technologies used in care, demonstrate the use of the genetic or genomic te technology um, data for decision making, and be able to identify the credibility, the reliability, and the limitations of the genetic or genomic information and identify ethical, legal, and social issues associated with genetic and genomic information. And so when we think about this, you know, it's important that as we move forward in the ability to identify someone's genetic footprint, that it's important that we protect them so that they don't have um, any biases um, against them and from a legal or ethical or social issue. So it's... Um, brings up those pieces that we have to be um, informed so that when we're working with the families and or the individuals or communities that we can talk the talk about um, what it means. Now when we talk about the practice domain, an example is that um, the um, nurse would be able, in the nursing assessment, be able to apply or integrate genetic or genomic knowledge. And we all collect personal health and developmental histories that would consider genetic and environmental and genomic influences and risk factors. And so we can see for the areas of knowledge, the nurse would have to be able to understand the fundamentals of genetic and genomic first health assessment, be able to identify disease, uh, susceptibility or genetic conditions and understand the red flags in a family history, um, early onset for chronic illness, and, um, or if there are uh, rare diseases that occurred, um, understanding what, what is the impact of race or ethnicity for someone um, and, and appreciating that for some races or ethnicities I, it may be more important for me to encourage them to seek genetic testing especially when we're looking at matching a medication that's best going to meet the needs for them. Um, so you can see that um, the, the indicator is that the nurse is able to demonstrate the ability to collect personal, medical, and family history that includes genetic and genomic as well as environmental risks. And that's something that you probably all feel pretty confident about. And now we're just kind of adding that next layer of looking at are there any genetic or genomic indicators or information that I might need to, to learn a little bit more about so that I can um, be competent and be confident when I'm talking to families if they were to ask me questions. And um, just another example that was kind of um, really relative to what you do is, is if you're making referrals for specialized genetic care is to kind of understand um, the responsibility to understand those resources that we're going to um, share with the public. So being mindful of what's a good resource um, and where we should tr take people so that they're looking at, you know, good information. So for the performance indicators, we want to develop an interprofessional plan that helps us incorporate genetics and genomics when we're working with clients and use um, that knowledge to help provide rationale for the clients about whether or not they should seek uh, genetic testing 
and or um, for the uh, diagnosis or care of whatever it is that they're um, diagnosed with. Um, it's also important that a nurse would develop a list of contacts um, for referral purposes which within the community or healthcare settings and be able to um, help a family with follow-up care. So w one thing is that we help, we might take that person and l lead them to make the decision to get genetic testing, but we, we don't want to just leave them there because we may need to help support them um, for follow-up after that, um, just, you know, when they find out what, what they've learned from the genetic testing and just be mindful of that more of a long-term relationship for them. So the complete document um, that kind of lists all of these, and, and this is not, you are not going to be tested on what is a professional domain activity. It, it, this is really being presented to you for enriching you and kind of exposing you to what the competencies for nurses are. So um, I will have the complete document will be posted just for you to review, but it is not going to be included in, a, in an exam. Um, anything specific from this document, but I did um, include it here because I feel like it's important um, for you to kind of see it. And if this opens, I'll uh, show it to you. And if it doesn't, um, I will be posting it on the um, in the folder. But it it is the full document that goes through all of the competencies and shows you. So I just, I highlighted a couple things that would be more relevant to you, but if you were interested in this or wanted um, greater depth, I just provided here for you so you can look at it. Um, but again, I'm not going to select test questions that are specific to, um, you know, a competency for a nurse related to one thing or another. It, it would be um, kind of assessing your general knowledge um, about that, but you can see that the document goes into um, each of the areas and, and is, uh, goes into great depth here. So I just uh, provided that for you and I just wanted to let you know that. So the last thing I want to touch on, or it's important when we talk about kind of preparing someone and having a greater understanding um, so, and, and this is something that's important for all of you to know, is that what are the different examples of genetic tests? You know, what's the difference between a carrier versus a pre-symptomatic? Um, so we look at, you know, a carrier test is going to help us, um, it'll test the int intended to show that that person is a genetic carrier of a condition. Um, and that's important for them, especially for family planning. Um, some examples would be cystic fibrosis, Goucher disease, and uh, Fanconi anemia, Tay-Sachs, and some muscular dystrophies like Duchenne's are carrier tests. So we can do that genetic test to see if that person is a carrier. Other types of examples are pre-symptomatic, and they would be tests that predict uh, that an asymptomatic person has a high probability of developing that condition. So the BRCA test for breast cancer is one that would be used to kind of um, help someone who's not symptomatic, you know, be more aware and, and be more careful about doing screenings because they're at greater risk for that. Another one is the, um, the Huntington disease. So that person could um, have this you know, genetic test done to see if they're going to have Huntington's before they have it. Another type of category is the susceptibility sus sus or predispositional test, which is kind of what we call like a risk assessment. And this um, test, um, the estimates the risk that an individual will have to get that um, condition. Um, it's someone who's not necessarily has the gen that, but they're the risk level. So looking at Alzheimer's, macular degeneration, bladder cancer, there are certain things that we're adding to the list that we can um, assess for someone's risk level for, you know, getting these types of things. And then we have another category that is the pharmacogenic, which looks at predicting the effectiveness of a drug. So the response to warfarin is one that we um, 
you know, C being used more often, statins and some cancer medications, and the hepatitis C treatment uses genetic testing to see what's the best match for that person for the treatment that they're going to do. And then we also have the nutrigenic, which is um, looking at a person's response to a particular food or diet. And this would help with working with people that had um, issues with food and their metabolism and their risk for disease. We can also do, um, it's also important that we, I give you some resources for you to look at. Um, this, um, these came from an, uh, a journal that talked about, you know, places that nurses could get good resources. And so we have the gene test, the American Nurse Association, Nurses Association and the International Society of Nurses and Genetics are three that are really good um, websites for you to go and look at if you're interested in that type of um, either gene test or whatever. So that ends this lecturette and we will be using this, um, not necessarily the competencies in the uh, classroom when we get together, um, but we will be looking at people's um, different, um, you know, test or things that we could recommend for people based on scenarios. So I'll see you in the classroom.